People have their own theories about how liars behave. You've probably got some ideas about what to look for. Maybe people will look up and to the left when they're about to lie. Maybe they fidget more. Maybe they pause before they start speaking. Well, researchers have their own theories about deception too. The first is the emotional approach proposed by Paul Ekman. This perspective suggests that being deceptive causes certain physiological reactions, such as high blood pressure and increased heart rate. These reactions are the result of heightened arousal associated with guilt, fear, or perhaps excitement. It's also this arousal which is thought to affect nonverbal behavior. The second theory is Bagoon and colleagues' cognitive approach. According to this perspective, being deceptive is a cognitively complex task. And because of the cognitive load associated with deception, body language gets neglected. As a result, there's a reduction in the overall amount of movement, slower speech and more pauses in speech. The final theory is De Paulo's attempted control approach or the self-presentation perspective. It argues that deceivers will try to control their behaviour, but because they're not very practised at being deceptive, their behaviour appears more rigid and inhibited. The interesting thing is that these three approaches all predict that different and sometimes contradictory behaviours are markers of deception. The emotional approach predicts that increased movements are associated with being deceptive. The emotional and cognitive approaches predict an increase in speech disturbances, whereas the attempted control approach suggests that there should be a reduction in movement and speech. So what actually happens when people are deceptive? Well, that depends on the type of lie that's being told. Let me explain. We know what people do when they lie and what people do when they don't lie because you can do that in the lab. Get people to come in and tell a story that's theirs or tell a story as though it's them but it wasn't or get people to say what they think about capital punishment versus saying the opposite of what they think about capital punishment. In DePaulo and colleagues' 1989 study, deception was associated with more speech disturbances and slower speech rate. In Vries' 1995 study, however, people showed fewer speech disturbances and faster speech rate when being deceptive. One of the reasons for these differences is the rate of speech and the number of disturbances depends on the type of lie that's being told. Making up information rather than just concealing the truth is harder to do, and so leads to more speech disturbances and slower speech rate. Fries' 1995 study also tells us that when people are being deceptive, they move less. They don't move their arms, the feet and the legs so much, despite what you might think. That study also showed that gaze, smiling, shifting position are not really reliable indicators of deception. So the old adage about looking up to the left as a marker of deception is probably not supported by the results of research. One thing that most studies agree on, however, is that voice pitch does seem to be a pretty reliable indicator of deception. It tends to go up when people are lying. The interesting thing is that we can control some of our nonverbal behaviour better than others. Maybe you can hide your guilty little smile or stop yourself from wriggling your hands or jiggling your legs. There are certain things you can't control so well. You can't control the voice. It's through the voice that you give the game away. In fact, people are somewhat better at telling whether other people are lying if they're talking to them on the phone than if they're talking to them face to face. But why would that be? Well, because when we talk to them face to face, we're distracted by all these things that we think give the game away but don't like the restlessness, the shiftiness, the smiling. On the phone, you've got no choice but to listen to the voice. That's when you focus on the voice, and people are a little better at detecting deception when they listen to the voice.